Cambridge Assessment Admission Testing, Sixth Term Examination Paper, Step 2019 Paper 1 Mathematics 1 Code number 9465 Section A The link to the question paper is in the description below. Hi, I am Babak. In this video, I am going to solve and discuss the second problem related to this past paper. Let me start by reading the question for you first. I will read the first part and try to solve it and then go to the next part. The curve C is given parametrically by the equations x equals to 3 times t squared and y equals to 2 times t cubed. Show that the equation of the tangent to C at the point 3p squared and 2p cubed is y equals to p times x minus p cubed. Okay, so in this problem, in the first part of the problem, I'm supposed to find an equation for the tangent line to the curve C at that given point on the curve. So I have to calculate the gradient of the tangent line first. Okay, so I have to do to deal with somehow the derivative because here x and y are not related together directly. X is related to t, y is related to t as well. So it means that at the end of the day, x and y are related to each other. So, okay, I want to calculate the derivative of y with respect to x in order to be able to calculate the gradient of the tangent line. Okay, but because x and y are not related directly, so let me start with this chain rule. So the derivative of y with respect to t can be written as the derivative of y with respect to x multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to t. Okay, so that's the chain rule. Yes. Okay, uh, but uh, let me... Uh, elaborate a little here a little bit more here so dy dt makes complete sense why because y is expressed to be 2 times t cubed and this relation defines y as a function of t actually yes what does it mean it means that if I have this relation y equals to 2t cubed for each value of t I will get exactly one value for y. So this means that this relation defines y as a function of t. The same is also, so then this means that this symbol makes sense. The derivative of y with respect to t makes sense because the notion of the derivative is actually defined for functions. And since y is a function of t, so the derivative of y with respect to t at least makes sense. The same is true for dx dt. Why? Because look here, this relation defines x as a function of t. Again, the same thing. If I have x equals to 2t squared, for each value that I assign to t, there exists a unique value for x. Yes? So this relation also defines x as a function of t, then in principle at least this makes sense to talk about. But the situation is not that clear for dy and dx, so let us discover this a little bit, even though what I am saying right now is not part of the solution of this problem. But I prefer to elaborate around the problem here a little bit more. So here, let me try to find the direct relation between x and y. Usually, in principle, this is not simple, but for this case, that the functions are simple, it's possible. So let us do that. I raise the both sides of the first equation to power 3. So then it becomes x to the 3 is... Um, oh, I made a mistake here, sorry. This is not 2, this is 3t squared. 
So I raise both sides to power 3, then it becomes 27t6. I, I divide by 27, I get t6 is equal to 1 over 27x cubed. Yes. Here, I raise both sides to power 2, then it becomes 4t6 on the right hand side. Then I can replace t6 here with that t6 from here. Yes. So what can I get? I get y squared is equal to 4 over 27x to the power of 3. So this is the direct relation between x and y. But you immediately realize that this relation does not define y as a function of x. Why? For example, let me tell you, let us take x to be 3 and then plug this 3 here inside this equation and try to find the corresponding values for y. Then you will see that you will get two values instead of one value. So y squared becomes equal to 4 over 27. I replace x with 3, so then it becomes 3 to the 3. And from here, y squared becomes 4. And then as you see that I have two values for y minus 2 or positive 2. So it means that for this value of x there is more than one value for y corresponding to that value of x. So then of course it becomes completely clear that this even though this is a relation between x and y but this relation does not define y as a function of x. Okay? But this on its own is not an obstacle for uh, talking about this derivative. You know that in these cases we can still talk about the derivative of y with respect to x by the method of implicit differentiation. But there is a delicate point here that even though you can use the method of implicit differentiation, but you're not allowed to use it blindly. The method of implicit differentiation only works when the function, when this, when this implicit relation can be expressed as a function in the vicinity of the point that you are interested in taking the derivative. Okay, so let me elaborate this a little bit more. Uh, so here, at the end, we have to sketch the graph uh, of this curve C. So if you don't mind, let us go a little bit ahead and try to do that part right now. It will illuminate what is my point here. Okay, how to sketch this graph? So here, I, let me start again with this equation that I got here. So y squared is 4, oh, sorry, 4 over 27, x to the 3. So if I take a square root from both sides, then y becomes uh, 2 over 3 square root of 3, and then I have x to the power of 3 over 2, or I can have y equals to the negative of that value. Okay? So it means that if I want to sketch the curve C, my curve consists of two parts. One of them follows this functional relation. Another one follows this functional relation. But if I just concentrate on sketching one of them, that would be more or less pract from practical point of view it's enough. Why? Because this one only differs by the first one by a negative sign. So the only thing that I can do, I, I need to do is to reflect the graph of this part with respect to the x-axis. Then I, then those two things, those, those two branches in total will actually constitute at the graph of the curve C. So this is why I only want to concentrate to draw the graph, to sketch the graph of this function. What can I do? You see, this is just a prefactor, it's a constant prefactor. 
So let me just take it to be anything, for example, A, because this does not change the uh, actually the details of the picture, the general uh, details of the picture. So I would consider it as y equals to a constant instead of 2 over 3 square root of 3, just consider a constant, and then you have x to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, because of this exponent, you immediately realize that you have a curve. But if you compare this curve with this line, straight line, you see that the power here, the exponent here is 3 over 2, and the exponent here is 1. And this exponent is greater than 1. So it means that it will increase more rapidly if you want to compare it with the graph of this one. But you already know the graph of such a function. This is just a straight line passing through the origin. So what we can say is that this is a curve, this one. This one is a curve such that increase faster than this straight line. Of course, on the other hand, this graph is not differentiable at the origin. Not because it is not defined, because the left-hand side derivative does not exist. So let me do it for you here. For example, if I take the derivative of this function, then it becomes 3a over 2x to the power of 1 half. So then if I take the limit of y prime, and if I want to send x to 0, I am not allowed to send x to 0 from the left, because this function is not defined, yes, for x equal to, for the negative values of x. So it means that I have to, I have to send it to the right, uh, to the 0 from the right, and then if I take the limit of this function when x goes to 0 to the right, of course I will get 0. So what does it mean? It means that the tangent line, the tangent line to the uh, graph of this function at the origin does at the origin does not exist, but there is a half tangent line with this, the gradient equal to zero. Okay, so using this information, I can in principle sketch this branch. Yes. So let me let me for example consider this as my x-axis, the y-axis, and this one as my x-axis, okay? So this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis. This is supposed to increase, uh, sorry, this is supposed to increase uh, faster than that one, and then I know that the half uh, positive x-axis is actually tangent to this graph to the graph of this function at the origin okay but i don't have the full uh, tangent line so for example i can the, using this information i might convince myself that the graph of this function starts from zero and zero because zero and zero actually indeed uh, actually work uh, sorry satisfies this equation and then i have this uh, graph something like that okay this is similar to the graph of this type of functions. And then because of this negative sign, the other branch would be the mirror image of this graph with respect to the x-axis. So hopefully if I can draw it, so, yeah, so something like that would be the graph of that function. Okay, now let us go back to the main problem. I am supposed to find uh, the equation, an equation for the tangent line to the curve at this point, okay? I consider two cases. Uh, first, let me consider the case that p is not equal to zero, even though it is not mentioned in the problem and I really believe that that's a flaw in the question. It, it should have been mentioned that p is not equal to zero. Okay, now let us consider that p is not equal to zero. If p is not equal to 0, then this point would be a point on the curve, on this green curve, but the point is not the origin. 
Okay, for example, let me suppose that this point is here. Let me call this point point A and the coordinates be 3 pi squared and then 3 p cubed. So what is the value of the parameter? The value of the parameter t is actually p, yes? This value for the parameter gives rise to this point y because if I replace t here with p, the x-coordinate becomes 3p squared and if I replace t with p here, the y-coordinate becomes 2p cubed. So it means that this point is a point on the curve corresponding to the parameter value t equal to p. Okay, now can I talk about this dy dx in the vicinity of that point? The answer is yes. Why? Because you can consider the you can consider a neighborhood around that point. In this neighborhood around that point, this part of the curve actually defines a function. This is, this red part is, can be considered as the graph of a function. And whenever you have a function, in principle, you are, you are allowed to talk about the derivative of the function, yes, at that point. Okay, so uh, how can I calculate this? Because my goal is to uh, calc is to find this, for example, this tangent line. I want to find the equation for this tangent line that I am drawing now. To find that, I need to find the gradient of this tangent line. Yes, this is easy to do. What I need to do is to consider this chain rule once more and then calculate this bit and that bit and then I can immediately calculate this dy dx which would be the gradient of the tangent line. Okay, so y is 2t3 so this means that dy dt is 62 and x is given to be 3 t squared, so it means that dx dt is equal to 60, okay? Okay, but then this means that, uh, now I use this relation, I substitute this here, and I substitute this here, and then I can find dy dt, dy dx, so let me write it down. So, 6t squared is equal to dy dx, which is still not known, multiplied by 60. And I divide both sides by 60. By the way, you see again that t shouldn't be equal to 0. Otherwise, you're not allowed to divide by 60. Okay, after that, I divide by 60, then dy dx turns out to be t. And because the parameter value here, t is p, so it means that the gradients, let me call it m, the slope of this uh, tangent line is p. Yes? And then I can immediately write the equation of the tangent line. What's that? It's the formula y minus y0 is m times x minus x0. This implies that I have y minus what is my y0? y0 is this one, x0 is this one, and m is this one. So replacing these, I will get 3p to the 3 is equal to p times x minus uh, 3p squared. Again, I made a mistake here, I think. Sorry, so this is not 3p cubed, yes. This is 2p cubed. You see, this is 2p cubed. Okay, so it means that here I have to write uh, 2p cubed. Yes. And then this means that y is equal to px minus 3p cubed plus 2p cubed. And then this means that 
y is equal to px minus pq as demanded in the problem. Yes? Okay, but hopefully I could convince you that you are not able to talk about the derivative at the origin. Why? Let us consider the origin. Assume that you want to talk about the derivative of y with respect to x at the origin. This is not doable. Why? Because assume that this is your neighborhood. So let me make it clear. So assume that this is your neighborhood. If you look at the, uh, around this point, in the vicinity of this point, what you see is that the curve consists of these two parts. So this does not define a function for you. So you are not allowed to talk about the derivative of y as a function of x because the y is not a function of x in the vicinity of the origin. And it doesn't matter even if you make the neighborhood even smaller, still this does not define uh, y as a function of x. So you are not allowed to talk about dy dx when you are exactly sitting at the origin. Okay, this is another way to say that y they should have mentioned that p is not equal to zero. Okay. Okay, now we go to the next part of the problem. Find the point of intersection of the tangent line of the tangents to see at the distinct points this. 2, 3p squared 2p cubed and 3q squared 2q cubed yes like that's very easy because exactly as I did here for example assume that uh, this point is the other point so let me call it b it's called it's 3q squared and 2 cubed q cubed yes and then I want to find the equation of the tangent line here or I don't know it might be happen that B is also on, is on the same branch but anyway we want to calculate that one so everything would be exactly as before the only difference is that P will be replaced by Q so I hope that you can immediately realize that the other one the equation for the other tangent is QX minus Q cubed okay now if you want if you look at the question we are supposed to find the point of intersection of these two tangent lines it's very easy I just set up a, a system of equations yes one equation is y equals to px minus pq the other one is y equals to qx minus q cubed and what I do I just equate the y value so it becomes px minus p cubed is equal to qx minus q cubed and I am trying I'm trying to find x so I move qx to the left I factor x out it becomes p minus qx on the right hand side I will move minus p3 to the right it becomes p3 minus q3 and because it is mentioned in the problem itself that these two points are distinct points so it means that p and q are not the same so I am I can safely divide by p minus q yes so since p is not equal to q I can divide by p minus q to find x it becomes p cubed minus q q divided by p minus q of course I can factorize the numerator using this famous identity yes and then divide by p minus q and then what happens that this p minus q and that p minus q are gone. So what I get is that the x coordinate of the point of intersection is p squared plus I write q squared next to it and pq at the end. So this is the x coordinate of the intersection point between these two tangent lines. But I need to also calculate the y coordinate. It's easy. For example, I can take this x here and put it here, then I can find my y. So y becomes equal to p instead of x. I put p squared plus q squared plus pq, and then I have minus pq. If I multiply p inside, it becomes pq 
plus pq squared plus p squared q minus pq. And then you can see that these two are gone. And between these two, I can factor pq out. So then y becomes pq times p plus q. So that is also uh, the y coordinate of the point of intersection. Okay, now I can take this one and that one with me to the next page. This is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate of the point of intersection, and I will call the point of intersection i. Okay, so if we go to the next page, what I can write is that i, the intersection point of the, those two tangent lines, uh, is given by this relation. Okay, so that is the intersection point of these two tangent lines. Okay, now it's mentioned, to the, uh, the pro problem continues like that. Hence, show that if these two tangents are perpendicular, the point of intersection is u squared plus 1 minus u, where u is equal to p plus q. Okay, so here I know that these two tangents are supposed to be perpendicular so if you go back and look here look here these are the equations of those tangent lines one of them has gradient p the other one has gradient q and then in the problem it's mentioned that these two tangent lines are supposed to be perpendicular so it means that the product between the uh, gradient of this and the gradient of that has to be equal to negative 1 yes okay so here it means that tangents so I would say tangents are supposed to be perpendicular so this implies that p times q is negative 1, yes? Now, I can put it here, between here, and then I can write it here. So, but of course, p squared plus q squared plus pq can be written in this form. Instead of p squared plus q squared, I can write p plus q to the 2 minus 2pq, two and then I have a plus pq at the end, so if I simplify that, it becomes p plus q to the 2 minus pq, yes? But pq itself is negative 1, so if I plug it here, then it becomes p plus q to the 2 plus 1, yes? Okay, so now assume that p plus q is u as given in the problem here, okay? Then this means that the y-coordinate the y-coordinate, which is pq times p plus q, becomes simply minus u. Why? Because pq is minus 1. So this is minus 1, and p plus q is u. Okay? And then what is the y x value? So the x value is this expression, and this is just simply u. So then it becomes exactly u squared plus 1. So the new intersection point, so the intersection point under this circumstance, it becomes uh, u squared plus 1 and then minus u. Yes. So that would be the form of the intersection points if the tangent lines are also perpendicular to each other. Okay, now let us go to the next part. The curve C tilde is given parametrically by the equations this okay x equal to u squared plus 1 and y equals to minus u we want to uh, find the coordinates of the points that lie on both c and c tilde okay so let me write so what is c c has this parametric equation x equals to 3t squared and y is equal to 2t cubed and c tilde has this parametric equation u squared plus 1 and y is minus u. 
you are supposed to find the intersection point between these two curves. So it means that you will need to find the point for which the x coordinates are the same and the y coordinates are the same. So it means that you have to solve a system of equations. So 3t squared has to be equal to u squared plus 1 and 2t cubed has to be equal to minus u. So if you look here, what is this? This is just a system of two equations in two unknowns. The unknowns are u and t. I want to solve this system. So the most important uh, strategy to solve a system is the method of substitution. So you can see here that u is just 2t cubed. And then I can put this one instead of this u here. Then I will get an equation only in terms of, uh, only in terms of uh, t. Sorry, I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be negative 2, 3. Okay. So if I put this here, this becomes 3, 2, 3, 3t squared is equal to minus 2t3 to the power of 2 plus 1. Then this becomes 4t to the power of 6. I move this to the right-hand side, so it becomes negative 3t squared, and then I have 1 equals to 0. So this is the equation that I have to solve, and that is a 6th degree equation. But this is one of those 6 degree equations that if you look a little bit closer, you can solve immediately by factorizing this polynomial on the left hand side. How? So you can write it like this. So you instead of 4t, so let me write 4t6, but instead of minus 3t squared, I would write minus 4t squared, but plus t squared, and then plus 1 equals to 0. Yes? So you see that this expression is just minus c minus 3t squared. But what is the benefit of that is that I can take to these two and factor 4t squared out. So what is left from the first one is t to the 4. What is left is minus 1 from the second. And then I have t2 plus 1. I can put them in, inside a pair of brackets. And then I can use the conjugate pattern to factorize this. So this becomes 4t squared. And then I have t2 plus 1, t2 minus 1. And then I have t2 plus 1 at the end equals to 0. Now here, I can factor the same expression t squared plus 1 out. Then it becomes t squared plus 1. I will have 4t squared multiplied by t squared minus 1. Then plus 1 equals to 0. Okay? I can simplify this a bit. So it becomes t squared plus 1. Here it becomes 4t to the 4 minus 4t to the 2 plus 1 equal to 0. But I'm sure, completely sure that you immediately can realize this pattern. That's a quadratic pattern, so I factorize it one step more. So it becomes t squared plus 1. Then I will have 2t squared minus 1 to the 2 equal to 0. And then the product of two numbers is supposed to be 0. So it means that either the first one is 0 or the second one is 0. But the first one cannot be equal to 0 because t squared is non-negative. So t squared plus 1 is a positive number and cannot be equal to 0. So it means that I have only one possibility left. And that is this expression has to be 0. Then it means that t is plus or minus 1 square root of t. Yes, so this is the value that I get for t. But I'm supposed to find the intersection point. So I will take these t's the two values for t and plug them here. I get x and y for a positive one, that's an intersection point. I change t to the negative one, I get another point, so there will be two intersection points. Yes, so let me just do that. Okay, so if t is plus or minus 1 over a square root of 2, x is 3t squared plus or minus 1 square root of 2 to the 2. But either plus or minus doesn't make uh, any difference here because power of 2 will actually kill the positive and negative signs. It becomes positive at the end. So then it becomes 3 over 2. Yes. But the y value is 2t cubed. So it becomes 2. And then you have uh, 
plus and minus plus or minus one over square root of two to the power of three. Yes. So then if I raise it to power three, it becomes plus so it means that y is equal to plus or minus two over two square root of two. So it means that y is uh, plus or minus one over a square root of two. So the intersection points are two points. One of them is three over two and one over a square root of two. The other one is three over two minus one over a square root of two. So these are the intersection points of these two curves, of these two curves. Okay, now uh, we have to go to the last part of the problem. And if you look here, we're supposed to sketch the graph of C and C tilde on the same axis. I have already done that for C. So uh, I will go to the next page and do once more for C. And in the same coordinate system, I will also sketch the graph of C tilde. But then let me take the parametric equation of my curve with me to the next page okay so here let me copy and paste that one here so okay so let me clean this okay so this is and I can move it a little bit here okay so if you remember I had this from the previous picture, the previous page, this was the this was more or less I exaggerated a little bit to make it easier to draw the next one. So this was C. Yes. Now I want to draw the C tilde. It's not that hard to realize that C tilde is a parabola, yes? Why? Instead of this U here, instead of this U, I can plot negative Y. Y is negative U, so U is negative Y, and I plot that there. So then X becomes equal to uh, negative Y to the 2 plus 1. So this means that Y squared is X minus 1. So you can immediately realize that this is a parabola opening to the right and the vertex is 1 and 0. So the vertex of this parabola is 1 and 0. So assume that this is uh, the point of 1 and 0. And if you go back to this page, so let me take this with me as well. So these are the intersection points of C and C tilde. So if I go here, we can just put it here yeah, and resize it a little bit. So these are the points of intersections. So 3 over 2 is a little bit larger than 1. If this is 1, then might be 3 over 2 you can consider to be here. Yes. And then this 1 over square root of 2 and minus 1 over square root of 2 are exactly these points of intersections. Yes. So this is a parabola. The vertex is this point 1 and 0. This point is 1 and 0. And this curve intersects the C curve at these two points, which are given by these coordinates. So using this information, you can immediately uh, draw the graph. Not the graph, you can at least sketch the graph. So it would be a parabola like this that will touch ex the curve C exactly at these two points which we got here yes and then the vertex is one and zero so if i want to sketch both of them in the same coordinate system it looks like that yes and of course i have a better picture here i have done it with geogebra here so let me also explain it a little bit so here this one and that one are the branches of c yes I haven't drawn the C tilde here, but what I have done, this is one of the tangent lines, and then I have drawn another tangent line here, 
so such that these two uh, tangent lines are perpendicular here. And then on the next uh, minutes of the video, I will show a simulation that I have done with GeoGebra. Then you can immediately see that if I start changing the point A and B in a way that these two tangent lines remain perpendicular all the time, then this intersection point C will trace out exactly the parabola that you actually sketched here in this, this black parabola that you sketched here. Okay, so if you want to see an, a better simulation of that, so let me just try to show that one to you by GeoGebra. So here, uh, you see, I have that the same picture, but now I can just run the simulation, and you see that here, the point C is actually tracing a curve for you, and then um, this is always... So it's a little bit slow now, but yeah, but I think everything becomes clear. And this blue curve that is produced uh, here, you can see is the same parabola with touches uh, C at two points. Okay. Okay, hopefully everything is clear. I would appreciate if you enjoyed the video, please like the video. And please leave me comments. What can I do in order to improve uh, the, the content of the videos? I'm ready to hear any suggestions and objections that will help me to improve my videos. And as a consequence, it will help the students uh, learn uh, mathematics in a better and easier way. Okay, until the next video, uh, thank you. And goodbye.